Hi from sunny Scotland. It's uh, July, 13 degrees, raining heavily, so I decided to check out YouTube for a video on this camera. It's the Wolf or Wolf, W O L F, Luxa, L U X A 6, but I couldn't find one. So I checked Camera Wiki. Camera Wiki says it was also known as the Brown, that's B R A U N, Imperial 6x6, and they have a link to it. It seems that Hermann Wolf produced it for Brown, having originally sold it under the Wolf name. So for one year, 1953, it was the Wolf Luxa 6 and then it became the Brown Imperial 6x6. So rare is a word that's overused in relation to cameras. I've seen Leica M3s described as rare when in fact thousands were made and thousands still exist. So I think this is a comparatively rare with the emphasis on the word comparatively rare model, but it's not for example, a Leica Luxus. I think only three of them are known. So this seems to be a quite rare video about a comparatively rare camera. Camera Wiki says it has five shutter speeds. So far I've only found two plus B. It says that there are two apertures, F8 and F16. This one has f7.7 .7 and f11. It mentions the right hand focus knob which has distances of 1 to 3, then 3 to 5 and 7 to infinity. It also mentions an infinity meter. There are two small finders either side of the viewfinder. The right one for the small aperture f16 in their case, and the left for the large aperture f8 on their camera. They mentioned that you hold the camera 12 inches or 30 centimetres away and the number that you can still read in the window is the exposure time which they say is not exact. They also mention a later model with f11 and f22 which has a Luxar 7.7 f 75mm lens in a Gautier shutter, exactly how it has f11 and f22 with an f7.7 .7 lens is not explained. My meter shows 1, 2, 25 and 75, but the shutter does not have half a second or one second exposures. To quote Camera Wiki, under this name, i.e. Wolf Luxa 6, it's a very rare, not gold, but a special step in the evolution of the camera. The entry is accompanied by three photos from different angles of a Luxa 6 with the shutter speed dial missing. So that's a resume of the Camera Wiki article. Clearly it's correct for the particular camera under consideration there. So I like weird cameras and I've had quite a few. I've, I've never heard of or, or even seen a, a Wolf Lux, Luxa 6. So I was intrigued enough to buy it. I made an offer which was accepted and this is what arrived. Over the years I've renovated and fixed up and played with and generally been around many old cameras. But this one had me stumped. I, I couldn't figure out how to extend the bellows. I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? Squeeze the tabs either side of the lens, but that didn't work. Try pulling them out the way, but that didn't work. No deal there. So how does it open, for example? I, I couldn't figure that out. I had no idea. In the end, I thought, I'll take the easy way out and I'll email the seller. Well, he couldn't remember, um, and but he did say, try rotating the tabs, and that turned out to be correct. And then maybe
maybe the strap lug assembly slides in some direction. I tried that and that was correct as well. So when you do slide the strap lug assembly, the back doesn't so much come off as the front and the insides detach and leave the back behind. The strap assembly may look as though it's riveted into the body, but it isn't, and it doesn't slide. I beg pardon, it does slide. The inside of this 67-year-old camera is in very good condition, certainly not abused. The lens is clear, and the AGC shutter works on the 3, not 5, available speeds. 175th, 125th and B, which arguably isn't really a speed anyway. On the back, there's a red window that can be open or closed by rotating the plastic thumb wheel. An X appears when it's closed. The distance knob and assembly is interesting. Rotating the lens tabs springs the lens plate and bellows forward to a stop point but rotating the distance knob has a further effect. It extends the bellows again by small increments. The shutter is an AGC, that's Alfred Gautier of Kalmbach, ever set shutter, so you don't have to set it. Press the shutter button, it opens and closes, and is immediately available to be pressed again and repeat the procedure. So there's no insurance against multiple exposures on this camera. Not really a problem, but worth remembering. The strap is plastic. This one came without a case. There is a thread on the shutter button to take a remote cable. At 175th, camera shake shouldn't really be an issue. At 125th, a tripod would be a good idea. There's provision for a tripod on the base. So let's have a look at the camera, and I'll put in a few words as we go. It doesn't really feel light, and it doesn't really feel heavy. It, it doesn't scream quality, but it seems to be fairly solidly made. The um, panel on the top gives the name and the country of origin. The button to the left is the distance meter and the button to the right is for winding the film. So how to open it? As I said it wasn't so simple uh, until it was explained to me that these tabs, one here and one here, are rotated and then the bellows extend out to a stop point which you can see here. The bellows on this one are in good condition and um, there's no sign that there might be holes or light leaks through there and um, I have to say also the chrome for, for a camera of this age is in quite good condition too. So that allows the lens to come forward to a stop point and this knob here will have a small effect which is very difficult to see on the the distance between the lens and the film plane back here but it does seem to have some effect um, exactly how accurate that's going to be remains to be seen I haven't put a film through it yet just here the lights not very good unfortunately is the strap lug assembly. I originally thought these rivets went straight into the body so I couldn't see any way that they would slide and that, that put me off thinking that they might allow everything to, to come apart. Uh, it's the same on the other side. Uh, just the lights again not good here but and you can see that this part of the leatherette is starting to peel but that's not really a problem. So let's open it up slide this one down and slide this one down and 
what happens is the front comes off with the film assembly. Again, apologies for the light, it's not great. As you can see, the, the back is in very good condition um, and the insides again are in very good condition here. This is the, the distance wheel which has the effect through this arrangement here of, of moving the uh, lens assembly forward and back depending on how far it's turned. And obviously this is the, um, the film wheel for winding the film forward. I'll put this to one side. And this is the viewfinder assembly on the top here. And the distance is the aperture rather is uh, determined. The shutter speed is determined by the numbers in these windows here. And as I say, they have one, two, twenty-five, and seventy-five. But this lens does not have those speeds. It only has one twenty-fifth and one seventy-fifth. This is the red window. This is the control for it. Open and closed. Um, other than that, the viewfinder's clear. Uh, as, as I said in the preamble, the strap is basically plastic, quite cheap um, construction. But the camera doesn't seem to have been misused in any way. Um, bring this back. Here you can see the shutter speed indicator that's set on B at the moment. It has a, a click stop at 25, a click stop at 75, nothing else. This button releases the shutter and resets instantly. It also has a thread to take a remote release. And here we have f7.7, f11. The lens is a Luxar in an AGC Acro shutter. Once again there's a little bit of peeling back of leatherette but I'll fix that up now, not a problem. The bellows appear to be good all round actually. So that's just a little overview of a Wolf or Wolf um, Luxa 6, the predecessor to the Brown Imperial 6x6 camera. Um, the next stage will be to put a film in it and see what comes out at the other end. Thanks for watching.